So the first time I tried to compile the MT Connect adapter, it was a bit like a moose in a subcompact car. I didn't think it was going to work. But it turns out it was really, really simple. So basically, once you have the source code, you compile it and you're done. Now there are a few settings to make, and I'll go over those in the video, but it is really, really simple, at least for the FANUC adapter I tried. Here you go. Let's start by downloading the source code from GitHub. The adapter comes as an adapter for FANUC, HOSS, everybody you could imagine. It's about 3 megabytes. It should download fairly quickly. Once it's downloaded, we'll open up the zip file and extract to our C drive. For convenience, I'm going to just change the name of the folder to adapter. We're going to be using that later from the command prompt. After we have our files downloaded, we have to add a few things. So inside the adapter folder that we've decompressed, we're going to be working with the FANUC folder, the FANUC adapter. We'll be connecting to our FANUC 0ID today. The source code for the adapter isn't quite complete. We actually need uh, some source code from FANUC, not some source code, but a library from FANUC called FOCUS. This is a library that allows a Windows PC or Linux PC to communicate with the CNC. Those files are located in our fwlib folder. And actually, just to make it really clear, we'll open up our fwlib folder. We'll copy all of the DLLs and library files, copy and paste it in with our source code from MT Connect. And there's one other file we need. We're going to be working with a FANUC 0ID. We'll take the C++ header file for the 0ID and put it in our build path as well. So once we have all these files together, we'll start up Visual C++ 2010. And we'll open our solution file. Point to FANUC, find the solution file, double click and allow it to import. Once it's imported, we do need to fix a few linking dependencies. So we'll wait until it parses all 78 files. Now that Visual Studio has all our dependencies figured out, we'll go to right click on the project, properties, under the linker, input. You'll remember we took the focus libraries and put them right in our build path. So we need to adjust our linker to look in the build path. Oh, and we're not worried about a debug configuration. We're just going to make the release configuration. And in our release configuration, we'll make sure all of our libraries are just in the build path. Apply okay and we're ready to build our solution we'll switch from a debug build to a release build and we will build our solution this is the moment i cross my fingers and cross my eyes and hope we get no errors Yay, succeeded. So what this build has done is in our directory, we've created a new folder with our release file in it. Inside here, we've got FANUC0ID. This is a command line program that can do a few things for us. It can run the command line adapter, um, or it can install as a service into Windows to run your adapter as a service. Let's, the other important piece of information that we need is the adapter config file. Let's take this adapter config file, 
copy it into our release folder so that Bannock Zero ID and the config file are in the same path. Oh, guess we didn't copy. We'll try again. Adapter, Control C, and paste. So inside the adapter, we'll open that with a text editor. We've got the port that our adapter is going to listen to listen on. Port 7878 is the default. The name of the service, when we install this as a Windows service, what name will that service be given? The host um, IP address of our FANUC CNC. Let's change that. Oh, 2.168.82.5. Fifteen happens to be the address and we've set our TCP port on the CNC to 8193 for now the default um, PMC address is 30 and 12 are fine we'll save that and exit and let's start up our adapter for the first time from the command prompt we'll navigate to our compile directory And the way that we'll run this, just in debug mode at first, is to type in the executable name. We're going to go in debug mode, and it's going to automatically look for that adapter.ini for its configuration. Oh. oh, you know what? We're in the wrong directory. We still have to go to... Release zero ID in the proper directory. Fanic zero ID debug. Just so that we get a bunch of verbose commands, we can tell what's happening. No, we're missing fwlib32.dll. That's a quick fix. We'll go back to the Fanic CD. Focus 2 CD. We'll take our fwlib32 file and we're going to move it from our build path. We're going to just stick it in our Windows system path. Windows. System. This should be just about perfect. Oh, did I forget? There we go. Paste. Grumble, grumble, grumble from Windows. All right, so now we're in the system path. Let's see if our run does any better. There we go. So Windows firewall is blocked. We're going to allow access. Yes, of course, we allow Windows Firewall to make those changes. And you can see our adapter is now waiting on port 7878 uh, for an MT Connect agent to request some status. Now, just for test purposes, we're going to go back to our browser. And we're going to pretend to be an agent on port 7878 just to make the connection and watch what happens. Okay, so we tried to make a persistent connection on 7878 and our adapter is trying to connect to the CNC. The CNC isn't here. Uh, this is my home. I don't machine metal or wood here. Uh, that's why it can't find it. We'll do a demonstration with the CNC on the flip side. Thanks for tuning into this video log on how to set up an MT Connect adapter to a FANUC FS0ID control. I hope it was helpful. If it wasn't, I'm sorry. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments. Thanks. Bye.